looking at my pen, then I'm putting it down. Got a thousand kids trying to copy my sound, they can't do what I do. I'm one of a kind with a middle finger up, cause I'm fucking your mind. Back to the board when I'm rapping it roar, and I happen to saw what they acting no more. I'ma separate me and you a level above from where you at now. I'm like a devil on drugs, peddling drugs in a kettle and jug. My music be a drug that'll get you buzz. Sunglass, cup of eye, I'm fucking I never seen skill, I reveal, cause I'm jumping high. We never stop till the day that I die. This is the story of an underdog who rose to the top of the Australian music scene with no media or industry support. This is the story of MC Cursor. Cursor grew up in Campbelltown, New South Wales. Some of his earliest music influences were fabulous Lloyd Banks and Eminem. He started rapping at a very young age with his brother Rates. Around this time, he also met fellow rapper J.U.F., who at the time was known as the best rapper in the area. J.U.F. was a year older, but they formed a close friendship and bonded over hip-hop. Kirsten knew at a very young age that he wanted to pursue a career in music. This has been mad keen since he was young, eh? Like, I couldn't put an age, like maybe 12, 13, 14, man. Like, pen and rhymes, jack of beats, pen and rhymes, like, going back over old instrumentals, turning them down as, turning, you know, how we all used to, man. Turn the cassette down and rap over just so you can hear the beat just a little bit and not enough the of their voice. The Bro, he was doing that when he was young as, you know. It said that Cursor would spend every cent that he had back then just to get some studio time and some nights he would record up to five tracks a night. This was back in 2008 to 2010. He was gearing up to release two mixtapes, Straight Out the Gutter and Down the Drain. On these mixtapes, he had tracks like I Am Cursor. Cursor, what you done? Sorry, motherfucker, but there's no refund. And Mad World. What they told, brainwash like they know and so. That's why I'm fucked up, but now my mates leave. I hope that 9 to 5 makes you feel like you made it. Cursor used to go to all sorts of gigs and sell his mixtapes. He started off by pressing just 100 mixtapes, but by the end he was pressing 500 and selling them all. Cursor also started to believe in the law of attraction, and even all the way back in 2010, you can see how hard his work rate was. His mixtapes also landed in the hands of Nebs from Nebs and Sam, who also happened to be a producer. I mean, I've seen this lad, like, selling his mixtape there, like, oh, you want to buy my mixtape, 10 bucks, you know? And then I'm doing, a, I was doing an East Pay in the toilet, and then as I'm coming out, he's like, oh, you're Nebs, eh? And I said, yeah, yeah, he goes, you make all the beats for that to them, eh? And I said, yeah, yeah, He goes, bro, I'll give you my mixtape, you know, like, um, and I think we exchanged numbers too. And then he goes, have a listen, tell me what you think. It was the um, Straight Out the Gutter mixtape. Um, and then so I remember on the way home, me and my mate, we pumped it the whole way, like start to finish, we just sort of listened to it. While his music started to make a buzz in the streets, he also started entering in rap battle competitions and battled the likes of Greeley and Jay Legend. I all together, thought that it was kind of clever, I was fucking half asleep thinking, fuck, he goes forever. <laughs> Cursor would also record at the same studio as Hijack and Torture, who were big fans of his music and would give him a lot of game. At this time, he was also doing a lot of shows around his area. And he was working very close with Nebs. They even made a whole album together that never came he out. He had, like, an album. Like, it was already an album. Like, I'm telling you, I've got all those songs still. Like, it's a whole album that never came out. Kurtzer decided that he wanted to make an album that was completely different to anything else in the scene at the time. It was also around this time that he had his legendary battle with 360. I've made a whole video about this on my channel, so please go check it out, and I won't touch on it too much. While him and Nebs began working on his debut album, he linked up with Hustle Hard TV and dropped two promo tracks, including Highest Man and Cursor is the Sickest. Both of these tracks blew up on YouTube and Facebook, and now have over 5 million views between them. This was a massive moment in Cursor's career. better on mics if we compare me and you. I'm just better at life. I've got time for my friends, fam, and my fucking fans. While the album was nearly done, they were having trouble getting distribution. They eventually linked up with Obese Records and helped him get the record out on the shelf. He then dropped a single titled Watch Me Get Him before on October 11th, 2011, dropping his debut album titled The Nebulizer. The album's sound was nothing like we've heard in Australia at the time, rapping over a lot of electronic and futuristic type beats. The album had features from Hijack, Nebs and Sam, Rapes and JD, and also became the most stolen CD from JB Hi-Fi. But on top of the album's success, it allowed Cursor to go on a national sold-out tour. Before the tour, he dropped a track called Dead Set. In this track, he explained all the cities he was coming to visit to do shows at. He did this before every tour of his whole career. These tracks ended up becoming fan favourites. This was a great way to promote his tours without any media support. He was also using a lot of social media to interact with fans. 
Also, on his first tour, he realised that he had a dodgy manager who was taking more money than he should have and undercutting him. You know, like, he had my card, and I was no, just so okay, happy to be on tour. I was grow. that happy to be on tour. Yeah. This is how, like, stupid I was, because yeah. we are on drugs and shit. I was that happy to be on tour. He was handling the merch money and had my card, and he would take the card home and say, oh, we're booking yeah. the next flights for it. And that first nebulizer tour, I got fuck all victim. pay. Like, he tried to play victim in that. By now, Cursor had a massive fan base. And while most other Aussie rap artists were getting played on radio stations, Cursor was getting no media support whatsoever. This didn't slow Cursor down whatsoever. In fact, it made him go even harder. He started regularly uploading videos to YouTube, being one of the first Aussie rappers to do so, kind of like Soldier Boy did in the US. He now has over 200 million views on YouTube, which is incredible for someone who's basically been blackboard from the industry. Just a year later, he teamed up with Nebs again and dropped his second studio album titled No Rest For The Sickest. This album was a lot more personal for Cursor and he touched on some home truths. It peaked at number 15 on the overall album charts and peaked at number 1 on the Australian urban charts. The album today is still a fan favourite. It also rose Cursor to superstardom. He said in an interview that this is the album that made him realise that rap is a career and he's never going to have to work a job again. And when do you, do you recall a moment when you said this is now... You know, this is what I'm going to be doing for the next 20 years. Yeah, when my second album payment come in, yeah. and the because the first one went really well, but then the second one kind of solidified where I'm at, yeah. and it was a good payment, and then the tour after that sold out. His address got leaked on the internet, and about 30 fans were rocking up to his house every day for photos. He then again proved how good his work rate was, and dropped two more albums in two years, titled Scott and King. They were both produced by Nebs. His goal was to drop 10 albums in 10 years. Both these albums again hit number one on the iTunes charts and album ARIA charts and also backed up with sold out national tours. He also performed at Big Day Out alongside acts like Pearl Jam and Snoop Dogg. He then released his next album titled Next Step under his own record label linking up with Warner Music titled ABK Records. They didn't even get to know Scott, he had a plan to write raps every single night that put me in position, jump on stage up where the mic at. Remember getting chased would by now, he was literally carving his own lane in the music industry, encouraging rappers behind him to do the same. They hadn't heard the lower class of West mm. Sydney, South West Sydney yet, and like mm. I was one of the first to do that, and they were used to like rappers not taking anything away from other artists, but at the time they were like, you know, rapping about the RSL club or yep. having a barbecue or something, and then here I come talking about what I was talking about it was just to be like oh yeah. shut that out shut yeah out. okay and now it's blown up around this time he said that he was battling heavily with substance abuse popping up to six Xanax a day just to stay focused this started to take a heavy toll on his personal life so he checked himself in to rehab he was nervous as to how fans would react during his time in rehab he wrote a song called bad habits which now has nearly six million views on YouTube and explains everything that was going on in his life at the time about six a day a little bit more mixing it with lean gotta stop people seeing what the damages can be just by looking at me shit what to do bad habits was the single of his next album tradition the album again went number one on the urban aria charts and number one on the iTunes charts it also put Cursor in a much better headspace. At one stage, he even considered giving up rap, but thankfully he didn't. Just before he dropped his album, Engraved in the Game, he had a paralysed vocal cord. He thought that he might not ever be able to speak again. Thankfully, the issue got resolved and his album again hit the top of the charts. He again performed at a sold-out national tour. During one of his tours, he ended up getting into an argument with some locals. They ended up shooting up his motel room. I was out on the hotel. Yeah, we fucking... That was from mingling with fans and then arguing with them. You've got to remember we're in their area. I think we forget that sometimes. He also featured on an international collaboration with Young Buck and Future. Wait a minute, Aussie accent got him tripping now. He then dropped his next album titled Lifestyle, teaming up with Australian producer Open Till Late. The album again was a different sound for Cursor, which kept the fans on their toes. The album again topped the charts and put Cursor back on top with a sold out national tour. Then just a year later, he dropped his ninth studio album titled Roll the Dice. The album hit number three on the overall ARIA charts and number one on the urban ARIA charts. Cursor was now nine albums in. His goal from the start was 10 albums in 10 years, but COVID got in the way. He also said that he's taking extra time on his last album just to make sure it's his best work yet. What Cursor has been able to achieve in his career has been simply amazing. As especially with all the hate he got at the start of his career and critics saying he wouldn't last one album. He also secured a deal with Nautica and got told that no one else in Australia moves CDs like him in 2022. 
He recently just dropped his song Winner, which is a single off his 10th studio album. We expect to hear the album sometime in 2022. For now, Cursor remains one of the most influential rappers ever in this country. Cursor took all the bullets early in his career so rappers these days can flourish and make the music that they want to make. He was like, yeah, say, say what you want about his music, but like his grind is crazy and he's just created this whole thing for himself. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, definitely big impact. The Cursor, Cursor came through on his own wave, man. You know, like Cursor came in and just came through and he was... You know, I, I think there, there's there's a precursor and postcursor, you know, version of Australian hip hop. There was there was what existed prior, and there was there's what has come in his wake. He is the ultimate rags to riches story in this scene, you know. Curse has been one of the hardest working artists for over a decade now, and will go down as one of the greatest Australian rappers of all time. Even if you're not a fan of his music, it's impossible to not respect the hustle and grind he's had for the last 10 years. I hope you enjoyed this video. This has been The Curse Effect by Desired Ozrat. I'd like to thank everyone for letting me use their interviews and footage. I'd like to thank all the fans for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment and share. Thank you.